Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we are going to look at the effect of changes in cost vector and how to perform sensitivity analysis in this situation. So let's begin. Before we start, let's see what we have done so far. We have already understood three cases. The changes introduced in the right hand side vector, addition of a constraint and addition of a variable. And we have already seen the consequences of these changes introduced. So now we want to introduce the effect in cost vector, which is also called the objective function. And let's see what is going to change. So for the notation, I re may recall you that C vector is the vector which are, we are talking about. This is a cost vector, the cost coefficient of the decision variables occurring only in the objective function. So as it should be intuitive to understand that since this cost vector is occurring in the objective function and objective function is playing a role in controlling the optimality of the linear programming problem, it does not play any role in controlling the feasibility of the problem. So therefore, we can very easily uh, conclude intuitively that the change in cost vector will come under the category of changes affecting optimality. This is no where uh, this is not going to affect the feasibility. For example, say you were given the original objective function 2x1 plus 3x2 plus 5x3. So they can clearly tell you the new objective function. So the kind of change they are going to tell you can be completely uh, the change in the complete vector. All the cost coefficients can be changed at once or you will see in different questions one change can be introduced at one time. So it really depends upon the context of the problem. So any kind of changes can be given to us. So as uh, I've just told you optimality is going to be affected. So we need to now connect it with the simplex table. Which part of the simplex table will be affected now? So here for an example I have given you an optimal table of certain linear programming problem and we know that the solution column is this on the right hand side and this is a Z row in which we write the net evaluations and the reduced cost or net evaluations of the all the variables and this is the row where we decide about the optimality. So if we are going to introduce a ch any change in the cost, so it is the reduced costs which are going to be affected. So this part of the optimal table is going to be computed again depending upon what changes have been introduced. So let's move forward to the particular example. So here I have taken a particular example of a maximization problem. I am given an objective function, three constraints are there and I have also been given the optimal table. So this is very clear that optimal table is always given to us. So now you just look at the first part. So in A part they are asking what is the effect on the solution if objective function is changed through this. So they have completely changed our Z. Earlier it was 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3 and now it is 2x1 plus x2 plus 4x3. So I have just told you with change in this Z we need to compute the net evaluations or the reduced cost again. And one more point here. We need not compute the Zj minus Cj of basic variables again because by default net evaluations of basic variables are zero. So even if you do the, their calculation, they are by default again com coming out to be zero. So there is no time, there is no point in wasting time in computing the net evaluations of basic variables, the variables which are in the basis in the given optimal table. So we only need to worry about the non-basic variables. and. We already know how to compute Zj minus Cj, what is the formula of computing Zj minus Cj. So here for example, I have shown this is the old Z, old Z means the original one which was a part of the original optimal table. Here I will be writing new Z, means new Zj minus Cj will be written over here. And one more thing, the value of objective function is obviously also going to change, the complete Z row is going to be computed again. So let's see how we have done this calculation. So for that we need to write CB vector, CB vector denotes the cost of basic variable vector here because in general we don't need it but when we have to specifically compute Zj minus Cj then we have to write it here. So CB vector can be noted down the cost of x2. So the cost of x2 you can see is 
1 the cost of x3 is 4 and the slack variable cost of s3 is 0 so remember the cb vector is a new cb vector the changed cb vector so you have to note down the value of the cost of individual variables from the new objective function not from the older one and then i am also writing here new cgs because costs have been changed so i have to write here new cj values so cost of x1 is 2 as you can see from here cost of x2 is 1 cost of x3 is 4 so these values are 2 1 4 and 0 0 0 obviously of slack variables and so you know how to compute these values hj minus cj so it's cb vector into this vector column vector of x1 taken the dot product minus cj so you can very easily see 1 into minus 1 by 4 plus 4 into 3 by 2 plus 0 into 2 minus 2 you can do the calculation it will turn out to be 15 by 4 and similarly you can compute zj minus cj of other variables and i have just told you no need to compute it for basic variables so x2 x3 s3 they are already in basis so you can straight away write 0 even if you want to calculate it you will get them 0 and then these are the other values which i have computed and similarly i have also computed the new objective function value so that formula also we know cb into xb so this cb vector needs to be multiplied with xb because solution has not changed solution remains same it's a cb vector which has changed so it will definitely give me a new z so now what we have to do after doing this calculation what we have to decide is whether optimality has been disturbed or not and you can clearly see although the values of the zj minus cjs have changed but they have retained their sign Earlier also all zj minus cj were positive because that was the optimal table of a maximization problem and now also new zj minus cj are also positive they have not changed their sign so that means optimality has not been disturbed so the solution which you are looking at in front of you means the same solution is remaining the optimal solution so xb remains the same the solution the values of x1 x2 x3 variables remain the same however the value of objective function changes because of the changes in the cost coefficient so remember even if the optimality is not disturbed here but you need to compute the new value of objective function and which we have already computed so you want to write your new solution is x1 is 0 x2 is 100 x3 is 230 and z is 1 0 2 0 so that was the first part let's move to b part in b part i have to do the same things i have just changed the values of uh, cost coefficients now so this time z is 3x1 plus 6x2 plus x3 so i'm following the similar lines and following the similar lines i have computed new zj minus ej i have not written here old ones you can see that from the previous uh, a part but i have just written the updated ones so you can see that here what is happening minus 3 and minus 1 and it is a maximization problem so in a maximization problem if in the zj minus cj row you get to see a negative value that means there is a scope of improvement or in other words we can say the optimality has been disturbed here optimality is affected it is disturbed so that means this solution is not the optimal solution for the new objective function we have to get back the optimality and you know we are at a situation when we have the feasibility we do not have the optimality so we have to do the simplex iterations from this step onwards to get back to the original sorry to get back to the new optimal solution so howsoever number of iterations it takes will get the new optimal solution and in this case i have just done that iteration i'm not going to explain that that's just simplex method i have applied after this so x1 is the entering variable and leaving variable decided according to the minimum ratio rule we'll get this new solution and in the new solution you can see again optimality has been restored so this is my new optimal solution solutions and this is the new z value so it's the same thing we have done in both the parts in first part the optimality was not disturbed but only z value was changing in second part obviously new solution xb also has changed and obviously z value is also changing so that was the first kind of change first kind of question that can be asked the second kind of question which can be asked is find the optimality range of 
cost of x1, x2 and x3. So first of all we need to understand the meaning of optimality range. The meaning of optimality range is for example you have just seen these two parts. In first part you brought some changes and the optimality was retained but in second part you brought some changes but the optimality was lost. So what is that interval within which if we introduce the change then optimality will be preserved. That means how much I am allowed to vary the cost of a particular variable so that the given solution, the given optimal solution remains optimal, it retains its optimality. So that's what I want to determine, the optimality range of cost of x1, x2 and x3. And for that I have to use the same technique, the only thing I have to do here is I have to suppose my new z is c1 x1 plus 2 x2 plus 5 x3. So remember firstly we are trying to find optimality range of cost of x1. So one by one we will be finding the optimality range of cost of each variable. So firstly we are doing it for x1. So when you are doing it for x1, so the cost coefficient of x1 needs to be a variable. So let's call it c1 and the rest two have to be same. Same means the original ones like the original was 3x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3. So instead of 3 I have made it c1 and 2x2 plus 5x3 I have kept same. So once you have your new z, now the process is same. You compute cb vector. So new cb vector is also turning out to be same because you have introduced a change in the cost coefficient of x1 and x1 is actually not in basis. You can see from here from the original optimal table x1 is not in the basis so cb vector will not change even though you have introduced a change in the objective function. So when cb vector has not changed is an important point to understand then you don't need to compute all zj minus cj's because all zj minus cj's are being computed with the help of cb but since cb is remaining same that means all zj minus cj's are going to remain same except for the variable x1 because the cost coefficient of x1 has been changed. So to conclude what I am trying to say that when you introduce a change in the cost coefficient of that variable which is not in the basis in the optimal table, in that case you need to compute zj minus cj of only that particular variable. Like here we will be computing zj minus cj only for x1. So this is cb into coefficient of into column vector of x1 this I have seen from the table minus c1. So here I do not have a particular value of c1 I have to keep it c1 as a variable. So upon doing the calculation I get this 7 minus c1. So this is going to happen I will definitely get it always in the terms of the variable c1. So now since I am trying to find optimality range so I know what is the condition of optimality. So the condition of optimality varies for a maximization problem and a minimization problem. For a max problem the optimality criteria is all zj minus cj should be positive, non-negative while for a minimization problem it is the opposite. And here we are in a maximization problem so I will use the condition that for optimality this 7 minus c1 which I have just computed will remain positive that means non-negative. There is no other condition going to be introduced because the rest of the zj minus cj are still same. They have not changed their sign. So it was only this zj minus cj which needs to be computed again. So this will give me some value, some interval. So here I am getting c1 should be less than equals to 7. So I have got the optimality range of cost coefficient of x1 minus infinity to 7. So that means if in this interval I put any value of c1 in the objective function then the same solution which is given to me in the optimal table will act as the optimal solution and z value obviously will change new objective function value you have to compute. So that is a way how you find optimality range of any uh, cost variable. So let's try to find now the optimality range of cost of x2. So what change this time is going to happen? x2 is actually in the basis. x1 was not in the basis but x2 is in the basis. And since x2 is in the basis, so the cost of basic variable vector is going to be changed. 
so original cost of basic variable vector is 250 you can see that but this time uh, the cost coefficient of x2 is c2 not 2 so this is c250 so since cost of basic variable has been changed so we have to compute zj minus cj for all the variables obviously for all the non basic variables because for basic variables zj minus cj is by default 0 so i have again computed all z1 minus c1 z2 minus c2 z3 minus c3 and so on and for optimality this time the condition is obviously same all zj minus cj should be non negative so basically you try to understand the difference in c part when we were computing optimality range of x1 since x1 was not in the basis so we only needed to compute zj minus cj of x1 but if it is in the basis like x2 then we have to compute zj minus cj of all the variables so you are getting basically this this and this rest are zero so these three should be non negative so now there is more than one condition which is going to come in terms of c2 and you have to take the intersection of those conditions why intersection because all of them have to be simultaneously satisfied so taking the intersection i get c2 should belongs to 0 to 10 so that's the optimality range i'm getting for cost coefficient of x2 variable Similarly, on the similar lines, you can find very easily optimality range of x3. x3 is also in basis. So, for x3 also, you have to compute zj minus cj of all the variables. So, that's all about the effect of changes in cost factor. So, I'll just summarize two kind of questions can be asked. Type 1 is this, which was related with part A and part B, that you will directly be given the new z and you have to compute the new optimal solution. So here I've explained the steps. First, we compute new CB vector, which is the new cost of basic variable vector. Then we compute ZJ minus CJ of non-basic variables. If it is negative in max problem or positive in min problem, that means optimality has been disturbed and we have to apply simplex method to get the new optimal solution. However, if it retain the same sign, like positive for max and negative for min, then it means the optimality has not been deserved declare the same solution as optimal solution but do compute the new value of objective function so that was what we have done in part a and part b of the example we have just discussed and type 2 question is part c determine the optimality range so that also i have explained thus we have to find the optimality range of cost coefficients of the variables one by one and for maximization, to compute the optimality condition, we'll put this condition. And for a minimization problem, we'll be putting this condition. So that's all about the effect of changes in cost vector. And that finishes our sensitivity analysis.